So here's the pipeline we built for Risk uh, Five. This is why I didn't want to show this at the very beginning because it's pretty complicated and messy. Uh, we walked through in the previous two videos the construction of this pipeline and some of the design decisions that I just sort of told you were why we were doing things. When you come to do this yourself, you'll see that there's a lot of sort of opportunities for making decisions. That plus four here, right? Maybe there's a way to use that to, to, to not have to duplicate that. And in fact, the way that MIPS does address calculations is that the next address, the target address, is PC plus four plus the offset. And that way, PC plus four is the thing we carry along the pipeline. And then we just use that added to the immediate value for the memory address of your load stores. RISC doesn't do that. RISC in the specification, RISC five, the specification says target addresses are base address plus immediate. And that's it. So program counter plus immediate, not program counter plus four plus immediate. Now we have a choice here. We could either add four in two different places, one for regular incrementing the program counter and one for calculating the return address that we're gonna save, or we could have PC plus four be the thing that we carry along. We could add four and then have PC plus four here, PC plus four here, PC plus four, PC plus four, and we'd be fine. But if we did that, we'd have to subtract four before we calculate our target address because risk five target addresses are PC plus immediate, not PC plus four plus immediate. So this is these are the kind of complications that happen when we're trying to pipeline something. So what I wanna do in this video is walk you through what the stages look like as they execute, taking an example instruction um, or even just in general, and showing these are the stages as we go through them. So we're gonna look at each stage individually. Here's the fetch, for example, and just verify that every instruction we wanna execute can work in isolation in that phase. So in the fetch phase, instruction fetch, we have the program counter at the beginning and the instruction register at the end. And the operation is load the instruction from the instruction cache and update the program counter for the next instruction. So PC gets PC plus four. And we're gonna keep doing that because we don't know if we're gonna have a new program counter address from a branch or a jump because we haven't even decoded what this instruction is yet. So to make a pipeline efficient, we're gonna just load the next instruction and start it, right? If it turns out it's a branch and we've, mm, we've, we wanna take that branch instead, loading the next instruction will be a waste. But if it's just adding and adding and adding, then it will benefit the pipeline. So we're going to load the next instruction anyway. We're going to PC plus four and update that. So that's instruction fetch. And again, we're carrying forward PC because we're going to need it later. Instruction decode is the second part. This is where the uh, instruction register supplies addressing information to the register file. The register file looks up the information at the same time the 32-bit immediate field is calculated based on whatever format we're doing. And again, we're waving our hands here. There's a few different ways that this is done, uh, but basically we take information from the instruction register and calculate, assemble a 32-bit number. And then that is the total result of the instruction decode, right? We're looking stuff up from the register file and deciding what to do next. In the third phase, which is execute, we are taking that information that we looked up in the register file and we are doing it, right? The ALU will do the thing. So there's a choice here, whether we're adding a, a register to a register or a register to an immediate. Uh, we're also calculating the target address, uh, storing that in a new part of this um, pipeline register so that if it turns out we're doing a branch or a jump, and if it turns out we want that target address to be the new program counter, we've calculated it and it's ready to go, okay? Result of the ALU goes into ALUR. We don't know what we're gonna use with that for. Maybe that's an address, maybe that's data. Doesn't matter, in the, ex in the execute stage, the ALU just does the thing every single time. And the next uh, instruction that we get will do a different thing. After execute is done, then we do the memory phase, okay? And again, maybe our instruction doesn't have memory access. The memory phase will be wasted, but it is more efficient to make the pipeline um, operational than to try to customize each individual step. Uh, the way pipelining works, the whole point of pipelining is that we make our instructions look as much like each other as we can so that we can overlap their execution as much as we can. 
So if we don't have memory access, this is a wasted phase, but the end result is more efficient execution anyway. So either we use the address, uh, we use the ALU result, the ALU result as an address, or we pass it along. And in fact, both of these things happen, right? We use it as an address. We uh, access the data cache, should the control logic tell us to, either for storing or for loading, right? Either we store S2 in the data cache or we load some new value out of the data cache. Regardless, we also pass along the ALU result. Um, and then we're ready for write back. So write back now, we have generated these three things. We've got the program counter, we've got the ALU result, and we've got the output from memory. And then in our write back phase, we just choose one of those to write to the register. Which register? Well, we have carried along the destination register each phase of this pipeline. We've carried it along with us so that when it's time to write back, we know where to put it. <laughs> So here's what the write back phase looks like. We're accessing this register, which contains the results. We're making a choice in this multiplexer, which says what we're storing. And then this destination register says where we're putting it. And again, if we're doing an, uh, an operation that doesn't require us to write anything to a register file, like, um, I don't know, a, a branch or something like that. Well, I guess that uh, can, well, no, because branches um, make a choice about a program counter. They don't write anything back to the register file. Jumps do, because all jumps are jumping links in RESC-5. Um, but there are some instructions that don't write something to a register file. So in that case, this phase is wasted. But the whole point of pipelining is we make things look as similar as we can so that we get the um, most efficiency from overlapping different stages of the pipeline. So this is the, again, the, the sort of the basis, the really simplest version of a pipelined RISC-V machine. Uh, I'm very interested to learn what I've done wrong, which places I've made mistakes in, so that I can uh, improve it and make it better for next time. Uh, but that's the, the basics of the machine that can implement RISC-V.